Good morning and welcome. Welcome to this online service by Rainy Baptist Church. My name is Jonathan. I'm one of the ministers and it's my absolute pleasure to be able to welcome you at this service this morning. Now, if this is your first time with us, it's great to see you. Thank you so much for connecting with us. If you have the opportunity, why don't you say hi in the chat box? We would love to know that you're out there uh, and we would love to be able to say hi back to you as well. Of course, if you're a regular worshipper with us, it's always great to, uh, to see you as well. And I want to say a, a very special welcome to those who are on the phones this morning. You know, we have um, a, a phone service, uh, as it were, uh, as people connect in with us via the telephones. We can't see, obviously, uh, any of your comments in the chat box, but we know that you're there. You're joining us in spirit. So it's, it's wonderful to be able to connect with you this morning. Now, I don't know what uh, sort of week that you've had. I don't know uh, uh, how your week has gone. Um, I know that for a number of people in our fellowship, uh, they have been receiving their vaccinations. They've looked forward to actually getting those for a, for a little while now. And, and it's, it, you know, as the rollout happens, so a number of, of people are now getting those vaccinations. And we can give thanks and we can give praise for that. But as I was preparing for the service this morning, you know, I, th I was thinking that even though we might be in lockdown, even though there are lots of things that we can no longer do uh, and, and perhaps that we're struggling with, maybe it's juggling our time between family life and work time, uh, maybe it's homeschooling, maybe there are additional pressures uh, that we have um, to, to, to face. You know, in the midst of it all, we also have many, many blessings to be thankful for. I wonder if this morning there is a particular blessing that you want to give thanks to God for. You know, the, uh, the, the, the writer of the Psalms, Psalm 100 in particular, says these words. He says, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. You know, the psalmist knew of the goodness of God. He knew the blessings of God. And, and in the same way, when we come together this morning, we're coming to worship God for who he is. But we're coming to worship God as well to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your faithfulness to us. Thank you for your steadfast love. Thank you that you know us and that you care for us. In the midst of whatever we are going through in our lives, whatever we are facing, there are things that we can give you thanks and praise for, not least uh, the gift of life that your son Jesus came to give each and every one of us. So as we gather this morning, why don't we do, as this psalmist says, why don't we enter his courts with praise and thanksgiving as we join together. Let's bring our praise and our worship to him in our prayers, uh, in the words that we share uh, and in our singing as well. So I'm going to pray as we, uh, we start our time together and then we're going to sing. So let's pray. So Heavenly Father, we, we come to you this morning with uh, thanksgiving in our hearts. We come to you uh, knowing that, uh, that you have blessed us, that you have poured out your, your grace and your love on our lives. Lord, in the midst of whatever our weeks have been, we thank you that, that we haven't been alone, that you are there. Lord, that you stand uh, with us, that you call us to join close to you. We thank you for your many blessings to us, Lord. And, uh, and, and we want to come this morning and we want to open our hearts to you and say thank you. Lord, we thank you that you are here with us in our midst as we join together as your people. Lord, I pray that this morning we would come with expectant hearts. I pray that we would come seeking you and, and standing on your promise that when we seek you, we will find you. Lord, would you fill us afresh? Would you receive our praise and our adoration in our words, uh, in our prayers, in our songs, in the things that we share together? Lord, we come this morning to worship you and to glorify your name, for you are worthy of all praise and honour. Amen.
So let's do that. Let's do as the psalmist says. Let's enter uh, God's courts with, uh, with our worship and our praise. And we're going to do that now uh, by singing. So let's sing together. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh, my soul, I worship Your holy name.
It's always good to, uh, to, to worship the Lord. Now, if you've been with us over the last couple of weeks, you know that we've started on a new teaching series called Discovering Jesus, as we're looking at the, uh, the life of Jesus uh, and how that should shape and influence uh, us as his followers. And Ricky this morning is going to be looking a little bit later in the service uh, about Jesus and calling of the first disciples. And it got me thinking, you know, if, if you had to describe what it means to be a follower of Jesus, if you had to describe what it is to be a disciple, you know, what that means, what it looks like to someone, what would you say? 
I thought as uh, as we prepare ourselves for for Ricky's message later on, um, it would be helpful to uh, to explore that a little bit further. And so we're just going to watch uh, a video clip now of someone describing what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Becoming a Christian has always meant following Jesus Christ. I have to say that because all sorts of people today want to make up their own path and call it Christianity. But if you take following Christ out of Christianity, you should really call it something else. Jesus spoke a lot about following him and a good deal could be said about what it means. It does mean accepting him as your Lord and Master. You can't really say you're following Jesus if you refuse to do what he commands. It does mean he's your teacher. It would be strange if you said you were following him but denied some of his teaching. And it must mean repenting of your sin and believing the good news because that's what he taught. So if you think about it, although the good news is about free salvation, it's something you can't pay for in any way. If you want to follow Jesus, it could cost you everything. Jesus put it like this, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Let's just think about that. You have to deny yourself. You probably already know that it's you that will get in the way of you following Jesus more than anything else. You, your sinful flesh, will have desires and ambitions and fears that will almost shout out at you, don't do it, don't follow Jesus. But if you're going to follow him, it means saying no to yourself. More than that, you have to take up your cross. People in Jesus' day had no difficulty understanding what that meant. It meant being ready to suffer, even the worst kind of persecution, even the ultimate cost. And there's no way you can follow Jesus if you're not prepared to suffer, if you're not prepared to acknowledge him, if you won't even own up to being his own follower. He himself said, if anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. There's some smooth talking false teachers who will invite you to follow Jesus and promise you health, wealth and prosperity. But Jesus didn't promise those things to his followers in this life. True Christianity brings you unspeakable joy but it's not a joyride. There's peace that passes all understanding. But Jesus said in this world, you will have trouble. Before you follow Christ, you ought to stop and count the cost. Following Jesus could cost you everything. So if that's the case, why would anyone follow Jesus? Well, thankfully, following him is not just about suffering. Jesus promised his followers spiritual life and the comfort of fellowship with the Holy Spirit called his followers his friends he gives us peace with God and a guarantee that whoever comes to him he'll never cast out for those who are in Christ there's a promise that all things will ultimately work together for your good and a future inheritance waiting for you that makes any suffering in this life more than worthwhile You know, hopefully you found that uh, that helpful uh, as we think about what it means to be a disciple. It did get me thinking um, uh, how much my life does or doesn't reflect some of the uh, some of the things that were shared in that video. It's always a challenge, isn't it? You know, we are a work in progress. I thank God that uh, uh, that even though um, we may make small steps, perhaps we make two steps forward and feel like we're making one step or three steps back, you know, God is still with us. He's still at work in us through his Holy Spirit, changing and transforming us more into his likeness. I give thanks and praise to God for that this morning. But Ricky's going to unpack more about what it means to be a, a disciple of Jesus later on, as I say, in our service. But I just thought that would be helpful for us to be thinking about uh, what that might mean for us in our own lives. We're going to sing again. 
Afterwards, uh, uh, Simon and Carol Jones are going to come and bring this morning's reading. Uh, and then Ricky, as I say, is going to unpack more about the calling of Jesus' first disciples. So let's sing again. Good morning. Today's reading is taken from the Gospel of St Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Jesus calls his first disciples. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, 
Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signalled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything and followed him. Good morning. It's me again. If you haven't already, would you open your Bibles, please, to Luke chapter 5. We're going to continue our series on discovering Jesus, examining his life to follow him better. A couple of weeks ago, Jonathan helped us look at Jesus' baptism. And uh, last week, we looked at Jesus' temptation and his testing in the wilderness. Uh, and what we're trying to do in this series is to discover more about Jesus by looking at these instances in his life. Uh, more about who he was, what he was like, in order that we will know him better, um, but also to see what lessons we can learn from him that will enable us to follow him better, to be better disciples. Now the image that we've used for this series, if you're on the telephone and you've not managed to see it, the image that we've used is that of a, a jewel with light shining through it. And with a jewel like that, if you, if you try to look through it, um, you'll get a kind of kaleidoscope effect. There'll be lots and lots of different facets of that jewel, um, different faces, uh, and you will see various different things. Um, if you look really closely, you might just get a sense of what it is that you're supposed to be looking at on the other side of it. Um, but as you turn it, every single time you will get a slightly different view. And, and that, that, the idea is that that represents uh, the many different facets of, of Jesus' life and ministry and teaching. Um, um, but also when we read scripture, scripture comes alive to us. We, we can read it through different lenses, so to speak. Um, we can read it at different times. We can read the same piece of scripture um, at different times and on different occasions. And God can reveal something different to us each time. So we want to use that, that idea of, of looking at the life of Jesus from lots of different angles and finding out what the, what the whole picture is and finding out what those lessons are for us as we go. Now today, we, uh, as we continue the series, we're going to take a look at Jesus' disciples. Now, I've, uh, I've enjoyed studying and preparing for today's preach, um, and it got really involved and really complicated really quickly. Um, and I had to use multiple pieces of paper and, uh, and multiple notebooks um, and even a whiteboard at one point to help me try and structure what it was that I was saying today. Um, and then it was as if the Holy Spirit just turned that jewel a little bit more, shifted the lens just that little bit and provided some clarity. Uh, and thankfully, um, you'll be pleased to hear, simplified everything for us. Well, I want to start with a challenge. As we think about Jesus' disciples, I wonder if you are able to name every one of Jesus' disciples. Now, I'm not going to test you on it. It's okay, and there's no prize. But I want to admit right up front that I do get a bit confused about Jesus' disciples because there's two Simons, um, and, uh, and one of those is a Peter. There are two Jameses, and there are two Judases. Uh, but there's only one Judas that betrayed Jesus. Um, now, it's a good job I'm not giving out a prize because uh, I've told you six of the disciples already, but I'd like you to try and name the other six. But right at the beginning, um, it's, uh, it's time for me to go a little bit Susie Dent from Countdown, um, and, uh, and I want to look at the word disciple. Before we get into um, Jesus' disciples, uh, who they were and, uh, and the reading from today, um, I want us to just understand just a little bit more about what the word disciple means. And the word in Greek, and my pronunciation is, is not great. Um, it's not great in English, but it's certainly not good in Greek. But the word is mathetes, um, which means learner or pupil. Um, and it's, the, it's from the same root as the word mathematics. So math 
uh, mathetes and mathematics. And math refers not just to the, the mental effort that is required to think something through, but actually also putting it into action. It's, it's thought and endeavour. It's thinking and effort. Um, and disciple is a, a very active word. We're not just to be blind followers, um, but we're to be active learners. One theologian, David Pawson, describes the process of being a disciple as learning how to live in the kingdom of heaven on earth. An active process of learning as we go. Being a disciple, a follower of Jesus, is an active process of, of seeking, of learning, of putting into action, um, examining Jesus' life in order to follow him better. Last week, uh, a few of us attended um, the online Fresh Streams con uh, conference. Um, thank you to those of you who prayed while we, th we were there. We had an amazing time. It was really challenging, but really helpful as well. Um, and one of the speakers there, Andy Glover, described being a disciple um, and he said that it's, it's to be with Jesus, to be like Jesus and to do the things that Jesus did. I find that a really helpful description of what it means to be a disciple, to be with Jesus, to be like Jesus and to do the things that Jesus did. So our, our reading from today was from Luke chapter 5 and it talks about Jesus calling three of his disciples, Peter, James and John. Um, so it was Peter, who confusingly is one of the Simons, James, who is one of the Jameses, um, and John, but not John the Baptist. OK, we've given you a couple more names there. See how you go as we go along. So as we as we look today at Jesus' disciples, I want us to notice right at the start of the Gospels uh, that Jesus does three things with his disciples. So firstly, he calls them. Secondly, he challenges them. And thirdly, he partners with them. So those are the three things that we're going to look at this morning. So Jesus calls his disciples. In the, the reading that we heard earlier, uh, there's a, a large crowd of people who have gathered around to listen to Jesus. Uh, and if you look back at the scriptures, if you've got your Bible open or turned on, um, then, uh, then have a look back to the, the reading um, and note that Peter, James and John were not there to listen to Jesus. They were not listening to him. They were just off to one side. Uh, they'd just finished their fishing. Uh, they'd come back from uh, a hard night's fishing. They'd, um, they were sorting out their nets and preparing to leave the boat ready for the next day. And Jesus somehow draws them in. He draws them in, he climbs into the boat and he says, let's just push out from the edge to make a bit more room for the crowd. So Peter, James and John were not there to listen to Jesus. Now this is the same story that's told in Matthew chapter 4 um, and in Mark chapter 1, but it's told slightly differently. Uh, and in those versions, Jesus says to those disciples, he says, come, follow me. That's Jesus calling his disciples, come, follow me. And John chapter 1, where this is also told about Jesus calling his disciples, um, it's really interesting because Jesus doesn't even have to call them. They just follow. In John chapter 1 and verse 35, um, John says, hey, look, there's, there's Jesus, Jesus, the Lamb of God. And two disciples, two people start to follow Jesus just because John has said, there's the Lamb of God. And Jesus, the master of questioning, says to them, what do you want? And they reply, where are you going? And Jesus says to them, come and you will see. And so they do. In different ways, in those different passages and in our passage today, Jesus calls his disciples, come, follow me. And their response in, uh, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 20, at once they left their nets and they followed him. And then a couple of verses on, immediately they left their boat and their father and they followed him. 
And then in, in Luke chapter 5 and verse 11, so they left everything and followed him. Jesus called his disciples and they responded in obedience. They left everything and they went to be with him. And then Jesus challenges his disciples. In the, the reading from Luke chapter 5, even though they'd been out fishing all night and without success, Jesus challenges them to push out into deeper water and to lower their nets. That's right. Only Jesus could challenge the fishermen to go fishing. And if you look um, at, uh, at Peter's response, Peter says, Master, we have worked hard all night and we haven't caught a thing. And doesn't it, doesn't it just feel like there's an excuse coming? And then Peter says, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. It's almost as if Peter's human nature was getting the better of him, that he had an excuse right at the tip of his tongue. But then he catches himself, fights his human nature and is obedient to Jesus. What a statement. This doesn't make any sense, but because you say so, I will do it. And what Jesus was asking him to do didn't make any sense, and Peter knew it. This was the wrong time to go fishing. You don't fish at noon. That's why they were out at night. And it was the wrong place. At noon, the fish come into the shore. You don't go and fish out in the deep. But Peter even though he knew that it made no sense, he responded in obedience. Because you say so, I will. I wish that was my response to Jesus more often, especially when things don't seem to make sense to me. But throughout my Christian life, obedience has often been slow. I've eventually got there, but it's taken its time. On those few occasions where I have responded like Peter, Quickly and obediently, God has rewarded that obedience richly. Peter says, because you say so, I will. So first Jesus calls his disciples to follow him. And then he challenges them. And then the third thing he does is he partners with them. Now, I wonder how, um, I wonder how you would respond in Peter's situation when a carpenter tells you, a professional fisherman, how to fish. It's, uh, it's like a, a plumber advising you on how to fix the electrics or uh, an IT specialist advising you on how to knit a jumper. Um, I know that I would have been more sarcastic than Peter was. But Jesus challenging the fisherman to fish is not the strangest thing about this passage, as we will come on to see a little bit later. But Jesus partners with the fisherman. These professional fishermen, they've been out all night and yet they've caught nothing. Um, and now Jesus not only instructed them to try again, which they wouldn't have done otherwise had he not said so. He doesn't just instruct them to try again, but this time the difference is that he was with them. Jesus was with them and the outcome was totally different. I've no doubt that Peter, James and John were great fishermen but they were even better when Jesus was with them. What they had done earlier in their own strength and by their own effort, even at the right time and in the right place, had proved to be unsuccessful without Jesus. But now, with Jesus on board, even in the wrong place and at the wrong time, they saw a massive haul of fish. So impressive, in fact, that they had to call for assistance from their additional partners in the other boat, if you look in verse 7. At that point, Peter recognises who Jesus is, and realising that he's in the presence of the Lord, he bows down before him. They were all amazed at the incredible haul of fish, and Peter was amazed at who this was in front of him. Jesus calls them, he challenges them, and he partners with them. And the final thing he does here is he speaks about a commission that is to come in uh, Matthew chapter 28. 
Jesus tells Peter, James and John that from now on they will fish for people. In calling these rather ordinary people to an extraordinary mission, Jesus takes what they know well and uses it for his kingdom. At any other time, this statement, fishing for people, would have seemed like madness. But when the Lord has just showed you what is possible when you partner with him, surely anything is possible. So how did they respond? How did Peter, James and John respond to what Jesus had to say? Verse 11 says, So they pulled their boats up onto the shore, left everything, and followed him. And what followed for the disciples was three years of on-the-job training, preparation for the commission to come and for the mission beyond. They lived and travelled with Jesus day in, day out for three years. They got to know Jesus better in order to follow him better. Now earlier I asked if you can name all of Jesus' disciples and I can honestly put my hand up and say, I can't. Even with my Bible open, even with my study Bible open, I can't name all of Jesus' disciples. And the reason for that is because it's a trick question. Because there aren't 12 disciples, there aren't 70 or 72 disciples, there are 2.1 billion disciples. If you are a Christian, if you are a follower of Jesus, you are a disciple. You should be an active student of Jesus' life, examining his life to follow him better. Discipleship isn't difficult, but it does require effort. Remember earlier that word, methetes. It's not just thinking, it's effort as well. Thought and endeavour. Discipleship is to be with Jesus, to be like Jesus, and to do the things that Jesus did. Those first disciples spent time with Jesus every day, learning to become like him and putting into practice the things that he did. If Jesus has called you, he has a challenge for you, a purpose, a mission. But better still, He wants to partner with you to accomplish it. We're called to be fellow workers, co-labourers with Christ. And with those first disciples, Jesus took what they knew and what they were good at and he used it for his kingdom. He can do the same for us too. So how has God gifted you? What is it that you're good at? What passions do you have? And then how can you use all of those things for the kingdom? To bring glory to God and to bring others to know Jesus. My prayer is that we would each be more like those early disciples in our response to Jesus. That when he calls, we respond obediently. My prayer is that we would be more like those early disciples in our daily lives, actively seeking to be with Jesus to be like him and to do the things that he did. And if you're not a Christian, if you're not a follower, not a disciple of Jesus, I want to share this with you. I had a really strong sense that that there was a message here for you today. And it was that, that following Jesus doesn't always start with belief, but it does always start with faith. The the guy that I mentioned earlier, David Pawson, he says that the Christian life may start with a decision for Jesus, but it takes years to make a disciple. In in this story, Peter clearly recognises Jesus as Lord, and he bows down and worships him. James and John didn't, but they had enough faith to follow. There were plenty of people who followed Jesus without being fully convinced of who he was. But they had enough faith to take a step and to follow him. And some later abandoned him, not because he wasn't who he said he was, but because they felt he demanded too much of them. 
My own journey of faith was long and full of questions before I actually believed that Jesus was my Lord and Saviour. I had enough faith to take a step. I had enough faith to follow, to explore, to examine, to question and find out more. But at that point, I didn't have enough faith to believe. But that came. You know what? It took some time for the disciples to believe that Jesus was the Messiah as well. If you look at the end of John chapter 6, um, at a time when many turned away from him and abandoned him, uh, he asked the 12 disciples, he asked them if they too were going to abandon him. And Peter responded, we have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One. It can be a process, it can be a long process of coming to believe and coming to know. You may not have committed your life to Jesus, you may not have said yes in response to his call, but you might have enough faith to follow for now. You might have enough faith to find out more, to explore, to ask questions. I would encourage you either to get in touch with uh, with one of us. We'd love to have a chat with you. We'd love to pray with you. We'd love to see if we can answer some of those questions. Um, or if you don't really fancy a chat with us, and I do understand that, um, then I would encourage you to join the Alpha course. Uh, it's the perfect opportunity to take what little faith you have um, and to, to open it up to questioning, to finding out more about who Jesus is uh, and what following him looks like. So if you haven't done that yet, I would really encourage you to do it. Get on the website and sign up and join in with Alpha. So Jesus called his disciples, he challenged them, and then he partnered with them. And I believe he wants to do the same with us. Whether he has called us yet or not, whether we've responded yet or not, I believe there is a challenge, a purpose, a mission that Jesus has for each one of us. And I believe that he wants to partner with us, to be co-laborers, that we work together to achieve whatever it is that he has in store for us. And I believe that he wants to do that by using the gifts, the passions um, that you already have. He doesn't want you to turn your back on who you are. He wants you to be the person he created you to be in order to go and serve him and serve the church and build the kingdom. Let's pray. Father God, I pray that you would give us ears to hear you. Lord, that when you speak to us, when you call us, when you commission us, when you tell us what it is that you, you need us to do, that you want us to do, Lord, I pray that we would have ears to hear. And Lord, I pray that we would have hearts that are open and obedient to what you have for us. Lord, may we be like Peter. May we be like James and John. May we say, yes, because you say so, I will. Whatever that is, Lord, may we be people who seek after you. May we be people who want to be with you, be like you, and do the things that you did. Father God, I thank you for this reminder today that we are all disciples. That we shouldn't just look up to and, and revere the twelve, that... that Lord, you have a, a place and a purpose for each and every one of us. Lord, would you be with us on, on our journey of discipleship, uh, whether we come with just an, an ounce of faith uh, or whether we have been committed for years and we are still seeking to follow you. Lord, would you, would you be with us on that journey? Would you speak to us? Would you uh, meet with us and encounter us, Lord? Father God, help us as we seek to be like your son, Jesus. Lord, take us on that journey, we pray. Make us into the people that you want us to be. And Lord, partner with us, I pray, and may we partner with you to do the things that you want us to do. And Lord, may all this be for your glory and for your name's sake. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Ricky. 
Uh, just to say as well that uh, not only can you contact us if you want to uh, explore that a bit further, but why don't you talk about this in your small groups? Um, uh, share what's, uh, what's on your heart uh, in terms of what it means to be a follower of Jesus, disciple of Jesus. Of course, why don't you um, also connect with, uh, with, with, with a Christian friend? You know, we're, we're here because someone probably has brought us uh, and, and is part of that journey with us as well. So if you do have questions, why don't you ask your friends as well? But we're going to uh, we're going to sing now in response uh, and as we begin to draw this uh, service to a close. So let's sing again.
So as we draw our time together to a close now, um, it just leaves me to say a couple of things. Firstly, a really big thank you to everyone who's been involved in today's service. Um, thank you so much for, uh, for your involvement. Uh, we've really appreciated it. Just to say as well, if you want to get involved in any future service, um, if you want to do readings, a prayer, if you want to share things, then please do get in contact with us. Get in contact with the reception team. We would love to pick up with you. Uh, we'd love to have you involved uh, in our services as well. Also, uh, just a reminder that uh, the Alpha is running on Monday evenings. Um, we've had a couple of sessions uh, already. Do be praying uh, for, uh, for that online Alpha event. Uh, we have a number of people who are attending. Do pray for them as they, uh, as they continue on their journey of faith, understanding and, 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 um, and, and working out who this Jesus actually is for them. Uh, do pray for them. Pray for, for the team leaders as well. Stuart, Paul, Annie uh, and Steve. Um, a number of the leaders have been uh, ill recently um, and I'm sure would value uh, your prayers for them as well, certainly in uh, now, but in, in, in the coming weeks uh, as they continue on in that course. Just to say that after this service, uh, we have a coffee and a chat catch up via Zoom. Everyone is welcome. We would love to see you uh, connect with us after the service. Um, it's an open invitation, as I say. The details you'll find in the chat box, um, they're the same details that we use uh, and have been using for, for, the, for the last few months. So please do come and join us if you're able to. But also, I just want to say finally a, a big thank you to you all for, for connecting with us this morning. Thank you for making time to come and join with us. It's been great uh, to spend time together as God's family in this, uh, in this service. And whatever uh, the rest of this day holds for you, whatever this coming week looks like, remember uh, God's blessings to you. Remember that he is there with you uh, and with me. Remember that he is he is enabling us to be able to be his followers uh, and he just calls us to uh, to be obedient to his leading as well. So it's wonderful uh, that you've been able to join with us. It's wonderful that as we go now, we don't go on our own, that Jesus continues to go with us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so I trust that you have a really good rest of the day. I trust that you have a really great week. And if I don't see you in the Zoom uh, chat after this service, I hope to see you next week as well. Goodbye and God bless.